Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with Kauda and Jala. Hey, Michael fucking Rainey. <laughs> Jacob from Matera. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Dubs, welcome back. Man, we're fucking on cloud nine. We just did our live AMA for June. Danny gave each of us an incredible gift from the Galapagos Islands. Each of us got a unique gift that represents our personalities and different traits. That's Jake, you got Jake a got a flu. gay face mask. John got a bong. I got a fucking Down syndrome luchador mask. <laughs> <laughs> Could not have asked for anything more from my friend Danny, man. Straight out of the Peanut Butter Falcon over there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that movie. Oh, dude. I know what it is, but yeah, boy. Great. So what? They put peanut butter on his balls and the Falcon licks it off? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen something like that. <laughs> but it wasn't in a theater. <laughs> Ooh, baby. <laughs> Y'all, it was in a shed, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine because it was my bird. <laughs> this fucking bitch today, man. When I was at the beach, this bitch on the fucking board- boardwalk had a falcon glove. Yes, and the thing, I swear, I thought the thing was coming toward me, so I, I bent back Dude, and I did this. That's such a funny prank. Just wear the glove and look around. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> Has anybody seen him? Fudge. <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> Did you see the bird? Yeah, he fucking flew right over my head. He gave me a flyby. Are you allowed yeah. to do that? Probably not. Top Gun flyby? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Dude I he buzzed you? I almost fucking shot him Dude, out of the sky. I think they work there. Because you say that, I feel like I've seen them before. I think they're working there to like get the they're part seagulls of... out of like the. Oh, that you know makes sense. Mean? Really? Yeah. Because <sighs> seagulls are like part of the beach experience. As soon as you said that, I remember like two people who I was like, "These guys aren't professionals." Wearing <laughs> <laughs> and seeing this happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just what like they... it's like an unemployed uh, fucking steel worker just looking for his <laughs> other glove under the boardwalk. <laughs> that would make sense, them? Jake. Yeah, I, I, like saw, I saw like a guy other? and a girl, like young guy and girl. Doing Were they it. close to each other, or was the bird flying between them? Uh, like the bird was like non-existent when I saw him, and then like then you would see like one go to like a guy like towards the end of the rides, and then like another block down Dude, or half a block crazy. down, you'd see the girl with a glove. It scared the shit out of me, man. Yeah, it, I, I felt like it was gonna hit me, and I bent down and I fucking held my hands up to my face like a little fucking bitch. <laughs> And uh, I was like, what oh the my f- fucking God, please no. Yeah. I said, what the fuck? And my wife's like, no, it's okay. She's got the glove. And I look back and the lady had the falcon glove. I was like, no, it's not fucking okay. Yeah, that's not what I was talking about. Yeah. I was worried about that lady's arm. The, be honest, the, the falcon went over, breezed by it. That's what I thought, pussy. <laughs> did the lady apologize or was she laughing no. when you looked at her? I think she did it on purpose because you can work those things like drones. <laughs> Damn, how much do you think a falcon costs? I might invest in one. $2,000. Sold. Damn. I'll take two. <laughs> so they got a friend up on a roof. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. I got should... these deterrent flamingos. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's the bird that talks? Is that a parakeet? I think parrot in general. A right? parrot. Okay, yeah. yeah. We should get one and let's make it real bad. Oh my god, <laughs> those things live to be like a hundred and ten years. Take it I back. know, baby. You ever see like? Just... Let's give them that hundred and ten year old mindset, dude. <laughs> Imagine getting a bird canceled. <laughs> I want to make it say bad stuff and then return it. <laughs> he doesn't say Polly want a cracker. He says you dirty rat. You guys remember that? Uh, no, and I don't want to. <laughs> All right, then I will stop. We're gonna edit that out, right, Danny? All right, y'all. Y'all ready to flip your flip new time? coin? Yeah. All right, yeah. So, Danny, uh, thank you so much. You brought me this sweet bong and. We got a new coin to flip with, an Ecuadorian 50 cent piece. He thinks it's going to bring me luck. Just wait, before you do, is it wise to flip a new coin? Because, like, you know, when chances are building up, like a slot machine. You feel like I'm due on that one? You think? You are got you me ready? thinking now. Are you ready to try something new? I think we should spend 15 minutes debating about it. <laughs> <laughs> this ruins all of chance. I don't know. Do you think this is. Uh, or this resets it, I should say. Is this against the rules? I don't know. What I'll do you think? Yeah, fucking let it fly, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, anything per- to change my luck. Rainy Pressure luck, pussy. Yeah. All right, here we go. If I win the toss, we're going to talk about the Impractical Jokers. Mm-hmm. And if you win, we'll talk about some scary person. Okay. Here we go. 
Is it? Ah, close. You're Maybe next there. time. You're getting there. I feel like next time is going to be the time. Well, well, John, new season's coming out next week. I think it just uh, started. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. You're going to like this guy. We're going to do another serial killer. It Thank you. Like. I'm very excited. Now, this guy had a very unique way of killing people. So much so, police knew what he was doing, and he did it. He murdered at least 10 women. However, the way he went about it, he was able to circumvent charges for most of them and got away with murder in a lot of cases. Did he eventually go to jail? For one of them, yeah. Okay. Was he cutting breaks? No. Okay. That was, that's a good guess. He was cutting hair, though. Was he really? He was known as the boozing barber. American? Canadian. Okay. So Are you know them. Tell us now how he killed ladies? Or is it hey, I'll tell you now. Okay. So what he would do is, uh, he was a big booze hound. He would drink, in his estimation, 50 ounces of vodka a day. Dude, he just want to throw up. Dude, he said um, he would start off each day by drinking a bottle of vodka in the morning, take a nap, take a nap, mm -hmm. and then drink some more in the afternoon, and then go out and pick up hookers, and in some cases, kill them. Well, all right. Dude. <laughs> so he's drinking all this while he's at work, cutting hair. Imagine how fucked up those haircuts are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you can you pull up the Raiders head coach again? <laughs> Yeah, I got you, fam. Yeah. <laughs> Just cutting ears. <laughs> Give me a .10 on the yeah. sides and back. <laughs> Yo, when'd you get four ears? <laughs> so this gentleman's name was Gilbert Paul Jordan, the boozing barber, responsible for the alcohol murders. <laughs> it sounds like it's sponsored content. Yeah. <laughs> you would actually like to be one of his victims, because what he would do was... he would. Get I ain't a bitch. <laughs> What's up with that? He would get hammered with these these poor women who would choose to spend time with him. Some of them were sex workers. Some of them were just women looking for company. And he would get them drunk. And then while they were passed out, he would pour vodka down their throats till they were so alcohol poisoned that they would either just be fucked out of their minds um, from a, um, a consciousness standpoint or in a lot of cases even just fucking kill them. Was with he, with alcohol. Due to alcohol poisoning, yes. Was he doing it to kill them? Yes. Or was he, okay. How do you get somebody to drink in their sleep, though? Dude, he would he would uh, be on top of them with a bottle of vodka, just like, dumping it into their mouths dude. until they just it just all went down. That's insane. Okay, Fuck. so that's how he He's would like get the, away with it. And yeah. you just yep. say they drank a lot last night. Dude. He's like the original date rapist. Y yeah, man. Dude, there were, like, there were at least 10 women that he did this to and killed. Three of them were in his fucking barber shop. Whoa. And each time he would call the police. So first he would usually call his lawyer to say, Hey, I did it again. Boss, I did it again. I can't believe I went ahead and I poured vodka down her throat. I did it, boss. Have you heard this guy talk or are you just doing your own thing? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. He said, Boss, I, I, I poured vodka down her throat again and I done did it. Is that what do you think a Canadian accent is? I believe it is. <laughs> it's almost Ernest esque. <laughs> Say hey, Vern. Hey, Vern. <laughs> but he would pour vodka down these poor ladies' throats and he would kill them, and he did it to at least 10 ladies. Some uh, women were fortunate enough to escape. Do not, like, you can, like, drown, essentially, right? Yeah, that could be what happened aside from the alcohol poisoning. Yeah. They could have just fucking drowned on all that liquid. That's crazy. Yeah. This truly is a it unique is. way. Convicted of one, he did it to at least 10. What was the uh, convicted one? Same method? It was the same method. I think police were just they like, were all right, we, we know what this is. Like, we, we have to fucking do something here. Because yeah. he was under surveillance for a while, too. And it's like, not that many people die of like alcohol poisoning. I, I, also, I alcohol poisoning at a barber shop. <laughs> yeah. The same barber shop. It's like, you know it is, but it's like... Is it illegal to buy somebody a lot of alcohol? Right. So that's how he, he was able to circumvent charges. But eventually it got to the point where they were like, look, we're going to charge him and see what fucking happens. All right. So this motherfucker, uh, Gilbert Paul Jordan, that is not his birth name. His birth name is Gilbert Paul Elsie. Why did he change his own last name? Uh, to kind of throw the fuzz off of his scent after the first murder. Really? Yeah. He went with Jordan, baby. He just did it. Greatest to ever do it, baby. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny, too? Uh, in addition to changing his name to Jordan, 
after a while, he tried to change his name again. He tried to change it to Paul Pierce. That's weird. It is very fucking weird. And uh, this is before either of them came into the league. Yeah, were they not? Wow. Uh, did they say no? Yeah, the second one they did. All right. You can say no to that? I thought it was just like... All because of him. Because what would happen was when you changed your name, you're, you weren't fingerprinted and you didn't have a background check run on you. You could just legally change your name through paperwork. Yeah, is that different now? It is now because of him. They, wow. they knew what he was doing, but because they couldn't charge him with anything, they just kept a close eye on him. And they knew that he was changing his name to kind of like give himself a fresh start. And they were just like, as his paperwork was being processed, they held the paperwork up to say, okay, now you also have to be fingerprinted and have your criminal background as part of the process. Wow. Hmm. So he changed all that shit for them. So he was born December 12th, 1931 in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, Jake. Beautiful. It is. I've never been there, but it's a place where I like to go. I know that people fucking trashed the place when the Canucks lost the Stanley Cup yeah. to the Bruins in 2011, I think. Yeah, something like that. When they did, like, like cars on fire and yeah. shit? Oh, dude, they tore it up. Yeah, they, huh. they rioted. It was nuts. Now, in their defense, the Canucks should have won. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Bruins were heavy underdogs on the road, and they fucking blew out the Canucks. And Yeah, man, people the, get a little weird. Real quick, does that mean Luongo never won a Stanley Cup? He did not, no. No, I think he was an Islander and then a Canuck. So he's been waiting for a Luongo time. <laughs> the only thing and I he's know, a Panther, too. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing I know uh, Vancouver for... Is they go up there to film movies mm -hmm. and replicate every city there. Yeah. And the other thing is the Olympics was there. Yeah. And I remember seeing Katie Lang sing Hallelujah Ooh. at the Olympics. And I was like, who is this? Like, come on, I'm going to hate, change the channel. And then I remember like four minutes in, I'm like blubbering. Oh. It was, dude, it was, I bought it on iTunes. What? It was like one of the first, dude, it was like when iTunes was first around. You pervert. <laughs> I mean, we look identical. I could be mm -hmm. her body double. Mm -hmm. Did well, you beat off to a song. No. Have you ever? You know, probably. <laughs> I, first, the first purchase was Pepsi points. I bought Britney Spears "Toxic" on iTunes. Pepsi points. You remember Pepsi points? Yeah. You it, type in like a sixteen-digit code. It's like Marlboro Miles for the obese. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of them, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. So uh, he was born to Jack and Winifred, and he had an older brother named Bud. Now, through interviews with both Gilbert and Bud, they said that they both had a normal upbringing. Neither parent drank. Uh, there was no trauma spoken of. Very strange. Yeah. The, the most traumatic thing that seems to have come about during this time was the parents got divorced when they were young, and the kids were sent to live with their father. Okay. So... You know, do you have any idea why it wasn't the mother or why they didn't? Split I don't it? know, but you know, it's, it, it is at least interesting. Yeah, so nothing about bedwetting or anything like that. No, no head no. hit, no, no concussions, none of that. Nothing the older brother says way? like he was just a very awkward kid from as far back as he can remember, but he can't pinpoint why. Hmm. No trauma, no nothing. Neither parent drank. After the divorce, uh, Gilbert Jordan he started drinking when he was thirteen years old. When did y'all start drinking? 17. Furman? Probably 8th uh, grade. What? Ooh, uh, bad boy. You are a little bad at Jake Bowen pants. Let me smack them. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this, you said? The this was 1944. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't around then. <laughs> <laughs> you do have such a sweet face. You could have been alive during that time and done well. You think so? Yeah. I look like one of the women in the portraits that you see no. back in the days. No, I could picture you with the little curly thing up front. Uh, you notice they people I like they are visibly uglier, right? In in the older photos. Like when you look yeah. when you're looking at it, a photo from a hundred years ago of like the women and and even the dudes, they are just yeah. idiots. A little different. I mean, they make me feel like Bradley Pitt or a Thomas Hardy. <laughs> Yeah, all right, man. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think they're bad looking. You don't think so? No. Old people? No, not old yeah. people. I mean, in the yeah, they're fucking they were hot, dude. I mean, even like 
ladies from the 80s, you know? It's like when they have fucking leotards and dumb hair, it's like hard to find them. Oh, well, brother, weird. I am a retard for some leotards. <laughs> Dude, recently, like me too, hashtag, uh, it was, it's something like, I think it's like wine. It's an appreciation. Mm-hmm. Do yourself a favor. Just do a deep dive now. Old leotard pictures from the 80s? Yeah. Are we talking new age? I think they're only... I think the check out the website reading. Legally Leotarded. <laughs> You'll find every era that you can dream of that has leotard-based erotica. Thank you. How old were you when you drank for the first time? Uh, 16. Okay. Oh, it was the worst, too. I was the, young, I was the old head here. I thought I was the man, too. It really stuck to me, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I had a blast, man. Yeah, most of my friends had already moved on to pills by the time I started drinking. Oh, no So way. I was behind. We, I don't think many of our friends did pills. Yeah, we're same. All, we were really? all weed and, and drinking. Yeah, weed and booze. Yeah. We had fun. So this motherfucker started at 13. That's basically the age you were. Yeah, he was a real Jake. <laughs> so he started drinking when he was 13. Uh, by, t- by the age of 16, he was a full-fledged alcoholic. No friends. Uh, started buying up hookers. In 1950, when he was 18 years old, he gets a year in jail for stealing a car. So he's starting to become more and more of a bad boy. Year in jail, man. Yeah, man. They take their fucking car theft seriously. Must have been a Republican-led city. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So in the next decade, he gets in a lot of trouble. But it's all for stuff that, like, doesn't really land him a lot of jail time. It's assault, breaking and entering, drunk driving, and heroin possession. So he's really tried a lot of different things in the 50s, dude. Wow. Those dude. are all bad things, Mike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this tomato, makes tomato. Sense, yeah. Was he getting years or months for these things? Dog, not much. Like, it wasn't until 1961 where, like, he didn't really get in trouble for this. It was just, this was, like, the most serious thing. So I guess there's an escalation, you know, through the years, through all those crimes. In 1961... He gets uh, picked up by cops because he's pulled off on the side of the road. Please go to check out what the fuck's going on, why, if cars broke down or if somebody needs help. And this fucking dirtball, at this age, he's 29. He's in the car with a five-year-old indigenous girl that he had kidnapped. Uh, is that Inuit? Is that what Native Canadians are? They're Native, yes. Yeah. Um... Where, how did he kidnap this chick? There's right. not a lot of information. However, he was initially charged with kidnapping, but he was never convicted. Man. How yeah. do you not get convicted for taking a five-year-old? Well, dude, honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with, with her being, being indigenous. Native, yeah. um, they, the police are just fucking real motherfuckers with oh any God. crimes related uh, against these people. I don't know if you're aware, but um, Native Americans have been treated pretty poorly. <laughs> And uh, it seems to be an instance well, of that. This is this goes back to Piggy Palace. What's his name? Uh, uh, Willie Picton. Willie Picton. He, yeah. A lot of his victims were yeah. indigenous oh, yeah. Yeah. Vancouver rights, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Now, this apparently weighs on him a bit. Even though he doesn't get in trouble, it sounds like he might feel bad for this. Because shortly thereafter, where he's let go... Jake, what are you going to say? Did someone ask him, hey, how are you? And he just had a breakdown? (laughs) (laughs) It all came out. Now, in 1961, he's standing on the ledge of the Lionsgate Bridge in uh, British Columbia, threatening to kill himself. He's up there for a while, and cops are just like, they're trying to like find like uh, a common bond with him, and he tells them to call his lawyer, and his lawyer shows up to the scene and is able to talk him off the ledge. He wasn't going to do this it. I know. This lawyer is insane. <laughs> yeah, this lawyer really uh, does a lot more <laughs> than advertised. And also, these cops, could you imagine, like, oh, we did a good thing. We saved a life tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. Little, <laughs> little did they know they set off a chain of events to kill. George went on to kill 10 women via alcohol dumping. Yeah, if there's a if there's a child molester on the ledge, like, gather as many people as you can and... <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> oh fuck we, he did it but dude they end up charging him with public intoxication for this little episode on the bridge when he gets to court he's being a little stinker what do you think he does to the judge I don't know gives him a Nazi salute yowzer yeah, no. yeah. okay <laughs> for the Nazi salute he's given six months contempt of court good so, for that judge <laughs> it does a little bit jail no time sense 
This isn't even that long after. No. I know. It's yeah. like six it's years fresh. after the war ended. Yeah. yeah. 1962 rolls along. He's out. He's driving along. He sees two women hitchhiking. He's like, oh, you want to have a couple of drinks and I'll drive you to wherever you need to go. And almost all of his victims are indigenous women. So he, really? he knows that the police aren't going to look too hard for them. And also a lot of these women also have hard lives to begin with. Many of them sex workers, many of them with addiction issues. So yeah. the police are just kind of going to be like, all right, case closed. So these two women happen to get in his car. They're drinking with him. The one drinks so much that she has to be let out of the car. So he pulls over, lets her out so she can get some air. As she's getting some fresh air, he peels out with the other woman in the car. He speeds off. He finds a secluded area. He sexually assaults her and then eventually throws her out of the car. The police catch up to him. He's initially charged with rape and theft for stealing their purses because he made off with both of their purses. He gets acquitted of the rape, but he is convicted of stealing their purses. Uh, he gets two years for purse theft. Did the how fast was the car moving when he threw her out of the car? Was it parked? I don't know. Oh, uh, the first girl. Yeah, I think uh, he just let her out. Like okay. she was just like, I need to get some air. He's like, All right, yeah, go for it. And as soon as she got out, he's like, All right, here's my chance to assault this lady. Peeled out of there. Yeah. Uh, gets out in 1965. This is when he gets murdery. So he finds a woman named Ivy Rose Oswald. And there's two ways that he typically murders women now. So he'll pick up an indigenous sex worker or invite a woman who's just looking to have some fun for the night, brings him to a low rent hotel, brings him there, fucking gets him full of vodka, poisons them with alcohol, and leaves them for dead. And that's what he does here. And then calls the cops. He calls the so police. So he's there when the cops come. He, in some cases. In most of the cases, like he'll call his lawyer, then call the cops. Just to say, I did it again. I'm so I can't believe that. I did a boo-boo. <laughs> but he'll call them. And please, please come. And for the first few, they're like, yeah, man, shit happens. Like These ladies lead rough lives. It's just how it goes. But after the first murder, he's like, all right, I'm probably going to be doing this pretty often. And one of one of the lines that that I wouldn't say he's he's not willing to cross, but one of the the things that he's still mindful of is preserving his family's dignity and that of his brother and that of his parents. So he's like, all right, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to change my name from Elsie to Jordan. So he becomes Gilbert Paul Jordan at this point. Okay, so that's the, first the name murder. in the papers <clears throat> when and he, yeah yeah. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, it was. That was thoughtful. Pretty sick, though. You're two decades before Michael Jordan takes flight. So you're ahead of the game. The original goat. Yeah. So, yeah, he became Jordan, and then I mentioned, like, he wanted to change his name to Paul Pierce later on. Um, from there, he also tried changing his name to Black Mamba. <laughs> this is definitely Mamba mode. He tried for King James. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in 1966 to 1971, again, more petty crimes, uh, little to no punishment. In 1971, what do you think happens to Gilbert Paul Jordan? He is 40 years old. Mm -hmm. With he crisis. buys a Mazda Miata. <laughs> he falls in love. Uh -oh. He finds a bad bitch named Winona. That sounds like she's going to die. Wanna bone you. So he finds Winona in 1973, they get married. In their first year of marriage, he gets popped for three separate sex offenses. Yikes. Honeymoon's over. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, he invites a bunch of neighborhood kids into the house oh. to watch TV, and he flashes his bird at them. Okay. Jake. Stop. No, I know. You better fucking cool it, dude. I'm not saying anything. Here. I know, but it's what you're doing with your yeah, put it away with your hips. Your, hips. <laughs> your hips. Not moving my hips. Your belt. Your zippers on the verge of bursting like a goddamn incredible Hulk shirt. This is a video. Stop. They can watch the video. This is not happening. They don't see it from my angle and you need to fucking quit it. Well, we're not gonna be able to put this on YouTube without fucking blurring this entire area. <laughs> my hands it's gonna be like a here. Japanese porno because you can't stop getting hard during fucking Child sex TV oh time. Oh my god, we should just we should just <laughs> pixelate his crotch in every episode. Danny Duffs, don't you dare! 
Stop yeah, it. can you Take do that off. to my tits? <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> Take off the pixelation right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're watching this and you agree that we should uh, engage in dixelation for just Jake, <laughs> please smash that motherfucking like <laughs> comment, <laughs> like button, and hit the comments. Danny Dubs, I know you have already done it. You Take need it to be, off. You need to be pixelated, right dude. Yeah. Take it off in three, two, one. You put them back on. Is what no. anybody needs to do. All right, dude. So for the second and third ones, he picks up hitchhikers and he sexually assaults them. So that's three sexual sur- asserts. <laughs> <laughs> He's dressed as Medea while he's committing these sexual <laughs> shirts. How do you show your bird to kids? I don't know. You tell us. No, stop. <laughs> I've never thought about this, Jake. Seriously. Like, you, I hope you guys like snacks. You guys want to tell me what time it is? Jake, Google it on your phone. No. <laughs> no. That was the worst episode of Sesame Street those kids ever saw. <laughs> One, two, three, four inches. Z is for boner. Is that the Italian count? (laughs) Oh, I love penis. (laughs) Burner, and he's still doing the same shit. (laughs) So, which one of these fucking kids (laughs) ratted? The only one that had cable at home. All right, so it's three sex offenses in one year. And in 1974, fucking this dickhead, he beats his wife to the point where she's hospitalized. Jesus. And when she's in the hospital, he's calling there, freaking the fuck out, demanding to be put through to her, to tell her to fucking check herself out of the hospital and come home. She's fucked up. She's not having any of that. And uh, this motherfucker gets to the point where he's wearing a disguise to try to sneak into the hospital to see her. What's the disguise? Count Dracula. The Italian count. <laughs> <laughs> a pizza delivery for a room of 308. <laughs> did, he ha- did he send his lawyer up at any point to talk to him? No, he just went up in a disguise to try to talk to his his wife, who he beat up, and try to get her out of there. But he wasn't ho- dressed as Dracula. He was not, no. But hospital staff was on top of this. And in 1975, she's like, fuck this shit. I'm not having it. She gets on a plane headed for California. She's going to leave his ass. He finds out what flight she's on. He calls and he leaves a bomb threat with the airline. Whoa. Okay. Certified stinker. Yeah. Just so That's his why. wife won't leave him. <laughs> he's charged with endangering the safety of an aircraft and flight. Again, he's in cahoots with his lawyer constantly. And he's got a pretty good lawyer. They traced his call in fucking the 70s. Oh, they didn't need to trace this one. Like, I think eventually, it, when they when they said that there was a bomb threat, I think his wife was probably just like, "I know who's fucking doing this. This is my, my husband." God, dude, I'm yeah. so embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're this like, is the third flight today. Can we hear him talk? The guy, oh, you know, can we hear the suspect talk? What's he sound like? Uh, Winona, this is your husband speaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look at the right side, uh, you see it's tarmac, and if you look at the left side, tarmac, because but you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> I'll turn this fucking plane around. Dude. <laughs> but dude, he's charged with endangering the safety of an aircraft in flight. And he's got such a good lawyer that the lawyer argues technically the plane was not in flight. So he's not endangering a plane in flight. Wow. Dude. All charges are dropped. Fuck Jesus Christ. That's man. incredible. Like, and how does he have this? I want to learn more about this relationship with the lawyer. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, who is this guy? <laughs> he's got a good one. Awesome. And eventually, like, brother. He ends up uh, accumulating a lot of dough. I will say this, though, about doing fucked up shit on aircraft. Y'all heard of the Wright brothers? Well, this motherfucker might have been the third wrong brother. <laughs> Wait, why is it already two? Or, or Bill and Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> they're the, yeah, they're the <laughs> okay, yes. The wrong brothers also have the same first name as the Wright brothers. <laughs> All right, dude. So eventually, uh, law enforcement becomes aware of his behavior. They're like, all right, so technically we can't hit him for a crime for poisoning these women with alcohol and fucking women up because he seems to always get off. So what we're going to do is we're going to file a petition to have him labeled a dangerous sex offender. So they have this hearing where each side has um, professionals come and state their cases. And um, during this time... uh, it's revealed that he, he's been diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which is hallmarked by lack of remorse, lack of empathy, 
uh, aggression, impulsivity. What were you about to say, Jake? For a second, I thought you were going to say anti-Semitism because he saluted the judge. <laughs> no, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, it's not good. No. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that with my arm either. It's a bad right. one. Yeah, very bad one. Uh, this petition is ultimately denied, and he is a free man, and he's free to go about his business. Dude. You are free to roam around the cabin. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when like that was a thing? Like People would just call bomb threats yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah, it would happen a lot. In school. schools a lot, it seems. And, yeah, yeah. In schools when people were trying to take tests. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was like... I forgot to study. Dude, there was a lot of movies. I think Road Trip ends that way, right? Like, the guy, yeah. like, he, like, he didn't get a chance to study for his test, and mm. then a bomb threat yeah. gets called by his girlfriend. Hot chick. Yeah. Bad bitch alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In February of 1977... He's like, fuck it. I'm just going to continue to do what I want to do. So he goes to Alberta Hospital, pretends he's a doctor. He signs out a mentally challenged 47-year-old lady. Oh, no. Who has the mind of a child. Please tell me he took her shopping. <laughs> he did not. So he beat this poor woman. Oh. He sexually assaulted her, got her full of vodka. Cops pull him over. They see all the fucking booze bottles in the back seat. They see that she's got bruises all over her. Jake. I'm just listening. All right. Why are you grinning so wide? (laughs) You're biting the insides of your cheeks to keep from laughing. And I don't like it. (laughs) The cops pull him over. They see all this fucked up shit. They see this poor girl with bruises all over her. And he's like, he's like, yeah, she just fell. She had a rough night. And this girl, she has the presence of mind and uh, the wherewithal to say, that's not true. He's been hitting me. So the cops get her. He's charged with uh, sexual intercourse with a feeble-minded person, which I believe my wife could also be charged with. <laughs> That's a law? <laughs> he is pleased with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, get in here. <laughs> Let me tell you this. <laughs> you what I said is... <laughs> But he's is char- he wasted? Did is he is he? Uh, of course, dude. He's hammered twenty four seven. Yeah. So he gets DUI for this? No, like they don't fucking even bother with DUI. They got him on fucking rape charges, assault char- charges, and sexual intercourse with a feeble minded person. Mike, can I just say that you should totally a hundred percent get Jamie arrested <laughs> <laughs> for because I think that would help. Not that your relationship needs help. That would help you. It would help your brand. Yeah, because dude, <laughs> then you see her in that jumpsuit, and you're like, "Bad bitch alert!" Yeah, dude, oh yeah. dude, conjugal Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah, you need to do this. Oh, Jamie, I'm so sorry, but <laughs> could you imagine? She has this on her record. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, let me let me put this on for for my picture. And I will use this in court. <laughs> Asking when the employer asks her why, why she, you know, can you tell us about this sex with a feeble minded minor person charge you have? And she's just like, oh, it's my husband. <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do, Your Honor. <laughs> all right. So through all this, he's only convicted of assault. So he gets away with rape. He gets away with. Uh, Sexual intercourse with a feeble-minded person. From the lawyer? Yeah. This is the luckiest guy in the world. This is crazy. And he does 26 months in jail. Okay. Seriously, he he should play the casinos. That's probably where he's meeting these ladies. I don't think he's allowed on the <laughs> reservation. <laughs> I mean, how many rape charges can you beat? And how many, like your bomb threat? Like, Is that a challenge? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> when we're out here. If you want to win some of Shaner's artwork, <laughs> <laughs> we found out how to win it. <laughs> so he's already served that time. So when the sentence gets hands down, he's free to walk. So in April of 1979, he's let free. And while he was in jail, his mother passed away. And it turns out she had a lot of fucking money. Damn. I don't know the exact figure, but she leaves him a sizable inheritance, which he immediately invests into the stock market, makes a ton of money, and um, this is the point. Like this is the point where he reveals that his drinking is just taken to the next level, crushing vodka. Even like when he's taking ladies out on dates, ladies that end up surviving, they'll say that during their time in the fucking motel rooms with him, he'll go to the liquor store multiple times that night to wow. get that much fucking vodka. That's. Uh 
a move right there. Brother, there was this uh, one newspaper interview. Uh, I think the writer's name was William Beatty for the Vancouver Sun. In it, he interviews fucking Gilbert Jordan. And he says, as soon as he introduces himself, he's almost knocked over by how pungent the smell of vodka is on this guy's breath. How does this operate? I don't know, man. It's crazy. I wonder if he had a... Like a relationship with the liquor store employee too, like if he's in there that often, mm-hmm. they have to be kind of buddies at yeah. this point because he's in, you can't be mean yeah. to him. He's in there all the time. Yeah, true. So, I bet they were. Yeah, I don't know. He's probably fucking. He's wasted when yeah. he goes in the second time. Yeah, I don't know. He can operate. Maybe can you sell booze to someone wasted if it's at like a liquor store or a beer store? I don't. Think you can say no. Yeah. You can? yeah, you're supposed to. I think too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think same for restaurant and bar uh, and well, liquor yeah, I knew, store. I knew restaurant bar, but I wasn't sure about like when you're buying closed containers. No, I'm pretty sure if you're visibly intoxicated, they're not supposed to. Okay, and not for nothing, but man, I wish they could make a candle that smells like a liquor store because doesn't that shit smell good? <laughs> you get to go in, right? You buy beer for the boys still. Yeah, I, I can if I wanted to. Normally, I, when I get beer for people in the podcast, I normally just go to Acme. Oh, uh, true. And it's just What's got the liquor store smell like? Yeah. It's just like dirty floors. Yeah, it's like... Is that what house, it is? Cardboard. Right? Concrete flooring. Yeah. Lottery <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> so during this time, late 70s, getting to the early 80s, he's still... He's getting prostitutes almost every night, and every now and again, he will intoxicate one enough to the point where they end up dying. It's the same thing. So this isn't necessarily all on purpose. I think it is. Okay. I, I think, sure, th- there's probably... And once they're passed out and he's dumping into the mouth. Okay, that's like... there. There's probably some instances where it could be accidental, where they're both just drinking so much that he's not even aware of what he's doing. True. Now, when he gets busted, like he does say that there's a lot he doesn't remember. And I, I do believe that. Yeah. I think he's a horrible yeah. person, and he does genuinely not remember much yeah. of what he does. He's just like the blackout <laughs> serial killer. I did yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't remember. <laughs> if I don't remember, I can't be guilty. Dude, and w- while he's in prison during the last time, one of the skills he picks up is um, he becomes a barber. He learns how to cut hair in jail. At what 50 is- years old, this is when he starts cutting hair? I don't know if it happened at 50, but his last stint in jail, he's okay. like, all right, fuck it, I got to do something with my time. He learns how to cut hair, and uh, now that he's out and he's got the money, he's going to open up his own barber shop. Damn. He's like, all right, cool. Now I don't have to fucking rent hotel rooms. I can just invite women into my business, and he puts uh, a fucking mattress on the floor of his barber shop. And after hours, you could invite them to your home. No, you don't want that, buddy. And, and why do you want him? A hotel still seems awesome. like the right move. Yeah, I'm with you, man. But then you have so many different people seeing you, and you're on the move constantly. Yeah, you're checking in under your name. It just seems like all these, like the what I feel I've learned over the last two weeks is like if you want to learn a new skill, go to prison. Yeah, yeah, you really can. But I think the hopes is you turn your life around. You don't (laughs) say, "Oh, now I can murder people in my barber (laughs) shop." I got an idea. Yeah. So the area that he would frequent most to pick up these uh, indigenous women was the downtown east side of Vancouver, which is their skid row. And that's where he chooses to open up his barbershop, which he calls Slow Can Barbershop. What's that? I don't know. I think it's... Slow Can. S-L-O-C-A-N. One word, two words. One. Slow Can. Slokin. 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 Can I get in another Molson? <laughs> <laughs> so now, he's porking these ladies in the back of his barbershop on a dirty mattress. And three of these women that he has to his fucking barbershop to get porked on the mattress and pound vodka end up dying in the barbershop. So he's... Does he call the cops then? Or does he get the bodies out? No, normally he'll just call his lawyer first and then the cops. And the cops will show up, they'll take the body, and they're just like, all right, you know, sex worker who had fucking drinking and drugging issues. Yeah. You know, it's natural. Yeah. It's like a sex worker natural causes. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, this lawyer is so great and at the same time just imagine getting that call in the middle of the night from this guy yeah just doing that voice yeah. this t- <laughs> oh yeah, i did it again <laughs> it happened again george 
what? <laughs> <laughs> he gives him a fade while he yeah. comes in. <laughs> yeah, is this guy still practicing? He is, and he calls his lawyer. He's like, that's it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to commit barbicide. <laughs> <laughs> He eventually changed the name of the store to Great Clips. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, in 1979, he falls in love again with a, na- a lady named Maria Elvera, who is a South American native. Sounds hot already, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm boning up. <laughs> uh, and she moves to Canada? She's living in Canada at this time. Um, while she's porking Gilbert Jordan... Her visa expired, so she has to go back to South America. But during that time, they're writing letters, they're corresponding, they're hot and heavy. And then in uh, May of 1984, she gets all her shit in order. She comes back to Vancouver so they can be together. October, uh, they get married, and in October of 1984, something very fucked up happens in that apartment. They have a kid. No, thank God. Maria's chilling in her, her apartment, the one that she shares with fucking Gilbert Jordan, and Gilbert brings a lady home. Does that ain't know? gonna fly. No, she's not aware of that. So Gilbert brings a lady in. Maria's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And he's like, uh, "This is my friend." So I don't know what you're freaking out about. And the lady that he brings home is like, "Dude, what the fuck is going on here?" Dude, fucking Gilbert Jordan convinces the lady that he brought in, um, that his wife is his cleaning lady. In front of In front of her, yes. Does she speak uh, Canadian? (laughs) (laughs) Is she speaking? She she understands exactly what's going on. Okay. And Gilbert's telling his side bitch that his wife is actually his cleaning lady and that everybody just needs to chill out. This guy has a set of balls on (laughs) him. God damn. That would be a fun challenge to do as well. <laughs> Bring a girl home and try to convince. Dude, this is, I mean, this guy figures it out because eventually the all the anger that was directed at him is now, both of these women are directing it at each other. The lady that he just brought home to his wife's apartment grabs a knife out of the kitchen and tries to attack his wife and the wife runs into a bathroom and locks herself in there. Jesus Christ. She's hanging out in there for a while, just terrified. And eventually she's like, all right, Things have quieted down. I think I'm going to try to make a run for it. So she opens the bathroom door. She starts tiptoeing towing through the hallway. She passes their bedroom, looks in, and sees her husband porking this lady. So she's just like, all right, fuck this. I'm out of here. So Dude, she... Hot, right, Jake? That's in, that's like when somebody like knocks the killer down in a horror movie and then turns their back on the killer. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they're dead. Like, you got to cut their head off. You can't just leave somebody locked in the bathroom. Like, oh... That settles that. Let's go have sex. <laughs> Keep your pants on, you pervert. Come on. There's an angry South American lady in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, uh, Maria's just like, all right, I had enough of this shit. I'm going back to South America. She dips from the she house. She made it out. Yeah, never she made it back. back. Un- unscathed, yeah. yeah. She never goes back. Um, during the next four years, the mid-80s, he's still doing his, his drunken maju. His what? His, excuse me? Uh, excuse me, Scrum? Uh, como se dice? Uh, uh, Is that Italian? Uh, alcohol poisoning prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> DJ is Italian, right? Alcoholado, poisonado, <laughs> prostituto. Oh, man. I, I like a nice prostituto in, my, in mozzarella salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, if you're listening, I'm hungry. <laughs> But uh, same old, same old. Uh, where things start to change is in December 19, 1986. Um, this woman named Vera Harry, he does the same shit that he normally does to uh, his victims, except he beats her as well. So that gets on police radar. It's like, okay, things are kind of changing a bit. So now maybe we can get him on this. Maybe we can't. Um, it's the 10th time you've been to this fucking barbershop to pick up a dead lady's body. <laughs> Dude. Do, do something. I, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> so where they're able to do something is with this next murder. So in October 1987, the next victim is a woman by the name of Vanessa Buckner. She's a sex worker who has a drug problem. Um, so he's like, all right, fine. If if this lady dies, nobody's even going to come looking for her. He was wrong because her family cares about her a lot, and eventually they do. Now, one of the most fucked up things about this is he poisons her with alcohol, 
and she tries to leave and when she stands up off the bed and starts walking towards the door her body is so poisoned with alcohol that bile starts coming out her mouth and nose jesus oh. christ and she collapses before she can make it to the door sounds like rush week you know what i'm saying <laughs> He ends up going to another hotel and he calls the police from the new hotel room that he just checked into to say that, hey, this woman might need help. She's got black shit coming out of her nose. Cops get there. By the time they get there, um, Vanessa Buckner's dead. They trace the call to that room. They contact the hotel. They're like, yo, who is in this fucking room? Yeah. They tell him fucking Gilbert Jordan. So they question him about it. And it's like, Naturally, it's him. It's him for all these fucking women. It's just fucking payphones everywhere at this time. Like, how is he so stupid? Yeah. He's hammered, though, too. I mean, he's yeah. drinking 50 yeah. ounces of vodka. I'm, I'm stunned that he could operate a phone. True. Quick question. With all these victims at the barbershops, they were dead, but did they at least have decent haircuts when the cops came? He didn't cut women's hair, Jake. Just, a barber can cut a woman's hair. Uh, not very well. <laughs> you ever seen a lady with a barber haircut? Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah, most of the women you fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Fried my ass. <laughs> uh, dude, that would be so... How awesome would that be to get like a beautiful bitch with like a haircuttery haircut? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking Megan Fox with Jake's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd still be hot. She'd I know. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Yeah. So the police are just like, look, we got to fucking do something at this point. So they try to get a warrant uh, and they try to get surveillance on him. So while they're waiting for all the fucking paperwork to go through, he's still doing what he's doing. They eventually get the surveillance. And as they're listening to him interact with women that he, he brings to hotels and brings to his barbershop and they're watching him, they're, they start routinely like breaking up these interactions that he's having with these women that he hires because they're like, all right. You're you're gonna fucking die. You should get out of here right now. Dude, this is like Minority Report, like before. Precogs. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen it? I have, dude. I remember I watched that the summer where I was probably my poorest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you have memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I do be getting lost in thought. <laughs> uh, I, I played PlayStation Two all summer, and I just watched DVDs. The only piece of furniture my wife and I had in our apartment was the fucking smelliest couch in the world that my sister gave me. And Minority Report was one of the movies that I watched on there. And I just, I remember sitting in the couch watching it, pretending that the couch didn't stink. <laughs> was it Febreze around at that point? Dude, it was one of those, um, it's not suede, but it's like a suede-like yeah. low-budget mm-hmm. material. Microfiber? Probably, yeah. because so It makes marks when you touch it? It meshed well with my micro penis when I porked it. <laughs> But it was one of those, and it was just like, just riddled with smoke. Yeah. Uh, it was smoke stink, not. Right, yeah. It not wasn't fart stink. Yeah, it not wasn't shitted stink. on. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it was just smoke stink. I could deal with that. Oh, not me, baby. I had to, though, because I didn't have fucking couch money. money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they get the surveillance, and uh, they're eventually breaking up these probable murders that are, that are going to happen. Which is crazy. They know enough. That they can be like, hey, don't go in there. Yeah. Don't, you know, he's going to kill you. Right. But not arrest him. Right. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Dude, eventually it just gets to that point because in November of 1987, he's about to to another lady. The cops are listening, and I don't remember the exact quote, but it was like, reading his words, it's just so fucking creepy and spooky. He's like, come on, baby, drink it down. He's like, I'll give you another 10, 20. What do you want, $50? Just drink it all. This is from the police cops surveillance. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're oh listening. God. Chugging just vodka. Straight. It is, yeah. And now, initially, Ugh. this woman, Rosemary Wilson, is playing along with it. She wants to be there with them. She wants to drink with them. And cops are just like, all right, we're going to fucking wrap it up for the night. They're packing up all their shit. They actually leave the apartment, and they hear her scream from the next apartment. So they're like, all right, we got to go in there. So they go and they get her, and um, they're operating under the assumption that he assaulted her, so they're able to arrest him for that. By this time... Um, they're just like, all right, we we have to charge him with murder. And the one that we feel as though we have the best chance of prosecuting him on is the uh, Vanessa Buckner murder where the woman that had the bile coming out of her yeah. nose. Because he made the phone call. Yeah, yeah. And he was checked into that hotel previously. And it's, dude, well, there's there's really, I don't know that there's a lot different 
than the other murders he committed. But I think this is just like a latch ditch effort where they're just like, we just have to try to lock him up. Yeah. You know, and it was we, the most recent. Yeah, it was. One, yeah. So, yeah. They arrest him. He's initially charged with first degree murder. They have a trial. Eventually, he ends up being convicted of manslaughter. Initially sentenced to 15 years, he appeals, he gets a chop down the nine years, and then he ends up doing six years with good behavior. Was that a haircut pun? <laughs> they take a little bit off the sides and back. <laughs> and he's down to, down to nine years. <laughs> and, uh, all right, so in 1994, he's 62 years old, he gets out. Now, he's not totally free. He's got to go to, like, minimum security jail where... He's got to work at Great Clips once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up the hair. <laughs> He's actually chained to his own chair. <laughs> Dude, yeah, uh, in this low se- minimum security jail he's at, he can do it go wherever he wants during the day. He's just got to be back by nighttime. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Dream come true. But, dude, he also has some pretty severe stipulations for him. You're not allowed to drink? Can't drink. Bummer. He can't be around women that are drinking. Well, do do they test him when he gets back, or does he have one? He does, yeah. He's randomly uh, uh, has a urinalysis. So he could potentially go get wasted, play it cool, come back. If he's cool about it, yeah. 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 And then also, he's also, not only is he not allowed to drink, but he's not allowed to drink in British Columbia. Or maybe it's Vancouver initially. And I think they just gradually like expand, expand the area where he's not allowed to drink in <laughs> to where it covers like a good part of Western Canada. Yeah. You're going to have to get over to Newfoundland and Labrador <laughs> if, you want, if you want another one of these Molsons. Just fucking flooring it white knuckling, trying to get to fucking Nova Scotia so you can have a goddamn Coors Light. <laughs> In 1996, he ends up violating his parole because he just doesn't come back one night. And uh, it's a weekend, and eventually he shows up on Monday. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep in my car. Dude. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, we're going to piss test you. He, he doesn't test positive for alcohol. He's like, here's what happened. He's like, a close friend of mine died, and I've been down in the dumps, and I fell asleep in my car. And it was really just a depression sleep. And I slept for almost two days. I'm here now. I promise you I wasn't doing anything. My test will prove that I wasn't drinking. So they're just like, all right, well, his test came back clean. So he's not in trouble. This was his first infraction since We could have drank for 24 hours. I know, dude. Yeah. Yeah, and it's out. Yeah. So he probably got hammered Saturday, fucking played it cool on Sunday, then went back late Monday. It was just like, yo. And they accepted this. They did. Excuse. They didn't bust his balls. Um... 1997 rolls around. He's totally done with parole. He opens up a new barbershop. Oh, no. So he's back at it, baby. Summer of 1998, he gets popped for another sexual assault. Goes to trial. In January of 2000, he's acquitted for that. And he's not, again, like this. they're expanding the net with where he's allowed, not allowed to drink. That's probably the most severe repercussion for him. But he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's still doing it. He just can't be seen out and doing it. Yeah, but, like, who do they have a fucking picture behind every bar? Like, how can you really get denied? People know him, dude. At this point, like, he has been in the papers often enough. And I think people are aware of what he's doing to these women. So they're just like, dude, get the fuck out of here. I mean, he could go to some fucking off the beaten path liquor store where you know nobody knows who he is to your point in uh may 2001 remember i mentioned that article by that guy jim Beatty for the vancouver sun Mm -hmm. he's interviewed for this article and this was after he got out of jail for his last sexual assault and he's not supposed to be drinking within the city limits when he's being interviewed he's interviewed he tells this guy to meet him at a bar and you could read this guy's story all online the guy's just talking about how scary he is in person because of how how widely his emotions range and how powerful they are when they come out. Like he'll go from crying to making you feel as though you're about to be murdered within a matter of seconds. Is he big, dude? You're just describing me. I, I don't know his size, but I know just from looking at his picture, he just looks like a, a fucking weirdo. Also, yeah. Can we just talk about how awkward it would be to get a haircut from someone with like alcohol withdrawal shakes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta like move your head around the whole time. <laughs> That's insane. So he bring, he meets him at the bar. Is he drinking while he is. being interviewed? And the, the guy that wrote the story writes what he's drinking. He's like, he's ordering vodka and beers. And he says, as he's like, like trying to hail the waitress, his hands are shaking. And he tells him, this will stop when I get my drink. So they serve him and he drinks. And once the story's printed, 
his parole officers see it. They're just like, dude, all right, you got to go back in. So in May of 2001, he gets a 15 month sentence for violating his parole. That's crazy. He has like not. I'm not trying to empathize, but it's a disease. Yeah, he's fucked you know up what? too. Yeah. yeah. So it's like. But what are you gonna do? You you hire a babysitter for him? Yeah. Yeah. He keeps violating his parole. He's released in February of 2002. Two weeks later, he gets caught again drinking with a lady in the city. He's a fucking old man now, right? He, he's, well, in the 70s. Yeah, he's getting older. Uh, born in 1931. Yes, yeah, so early 70s. Yeah. How has his liver not exploded yet? Well, it's, it's getting close to that All point. All that fucking liquor. He eventually... All right, so he goes back in for violating his probation in 2002. He does a year in jail. He gets out again. Doesn't get in trouble again until 2004. He drives to fucking Saskatchewan to get drunk. And he's not hes not supposed to leave the city, though. Oh, I was going to say, he's still okay. under, like, watch. He's not supposed to drink in the city, but he's also not supposed to leave the city because they just assume, like, all right, if we tell him he can't drink in British Columbia, He'll this motherfucker is going to be tearing it up in Saskatoon. Yeah. So he goes to Saskatchewan to get hammered, and uh, he gets arrested again. And this was 2004, but fortunately, they don't have to deal with it much longer because in 2006... Uh, he develops cirrhosis of the liver, which ultimately yeah. kills him. In like less than a year, once he gets diagnosed, I don't know when he was diagnosed, but it happens quick. Once he's he... still wilding out in 2004. That was his last noted fucking party time. Yeah, okay. I mean, oh, yeah. I can't believe he lived that long. Yeah, but once dude, you start to get the symptoms of cirrhosis of the it's liver, like, it's too late. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. the time has passed. I was just telling my wife about this today. When I when I worked at the uh, hospital where I was an orderly, like I remember transporting a patient who had cirrhosis, and uh, he was fucked up. He was all yellow. Yeah, I was yeah, about to say you jaundice. get jaundice, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as I was like transporting to wherever he had to go, he's like, "Do you drink?" And I said, "Yeah." He's like, "He's like, if I were you, I wouldn't." He's like, "This is what happens when you have too good of a time." This is what happens to you, motherfucker. Yeah. I know how to control myself. Well, maybe not you. No, <laughs> yeah, he was talking to the right one. <laughs> <laughs> Were you big on liquor though, dude? I love. Oh uh, yeah, I loved. Brown. I loved Jack and Coke was a, was a drink of mine. Gin and tonic was a drink of mine. Then also I had a big whiskey phase where I would just drink straight whiskey. I drink uh, Uzo. I would come in from work. That was my thing. At a that period, was Uzo. Uzo was like Japanese Greek rum. liqueur. Is that uh, like bam bamboo? Uh, it's like bambuca? amaretto. I think okay. is the comparable one. So it's like sweet or sambuca. Sambuca. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like the black licorice kind of flavor. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's tasty, and I, I had a phase where I would just come home from work, and I would take a shot of Uzo to take the fucking edge off, and I needed it. I was working with bad kids at the time. Chase it with a bottle of Uzo. Yeah. <laughs> have your wife hold, hold it over your mouth. <laughs> Man, it's it's astounding, like, how much I fucking drank then, and, you know, most days I would make it into work the next day, but, dude, I remember one night, I was up all night. This was a Sunday night, too. I was up all night. I was drinking Yingling Cans. I think that day I had a 12-pack, and I sent my wife out for another one at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. And Jesus, dude. Dude, I had to be at work at 7.40, I think I had to be in. So it's 1 o'clock. I sent her out for another 12-pack. And uh, I put the... You didn't even go with her? Would I you have to stay home and watch kids? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy who's already a kid yeah. needs to watch the kids. Yeah. I, I mean, it's fine. If, yeah, you know, they were asleep. Yeah. You, we both need Baba. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel your pain, fam. But dude, this was like, I sent her out at one. She gets back probably like, you know, one thirty ish I was like, all right, I'm, what the fuck did I put? I think I put on The Departed, which is like Three two hour and a half movie. hours long. Yeah. God, I so I was movie. like, all right. So I got till like four o'clock. Then I got to fucking chill for a couple hours. Not go to sleep. I... I don't remember if I made it into work that day, but I do remember my plan being like, all right, I can watch The Departed in its entirety. Drink while I'm watching. Yes. Yeah. Mike. And then go sleep for and a couple two and a half hours? That's some speed. No, I, I didn't drink that whole 12 pack yeah. in two hours, but I had a 12 pack that day. And I, yeah, I would live it up on the weekends. Oh, I would live it up Damn. every day. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's working. Yeah. He's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had a boss. It was the nicest lady in the fucking world. And at the time, the Phillies were really good, so she understood. Like, <laughs> yeah. She's like, all right, Mike's probably going to be out tomorrow. Yeah, I have addicts in my family, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah. Phillies are 500 this year. <laughs> Shows up in a Burl jersey. <laughs> Wait, I got a couple of follow-up questions here. So first thing I need to know, did he... Uh, did he outlive his lawyer 
Is that mm. something I'm curious about? That's a great question. I don't know. I think that would be grounds for a stinker or a mini stinker episode. Yes, I really yeah. want to know. I like to learn more about, about, about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so interesting. And then the other thing is, like, when he died, did he confess to anything or like leave a note confessing? No, and it's, that's a great question. When he was going to jail right before, all right, when he was initially arrested for the first degree murder of Vanessa Buckner, mm-hmm. the police put an undercover cop in the paddy wagon with him so as he's being transported he st- strikes up a conversation with them and they're processed at the same time they're put in the same cell block with the purpose of them becoming good enough friends as to where he'll admit shit to he'll him. admit shit but he's he's wise to their tricks how long was that guy playing a fucking i don't know a criminal wow. in jail that's crazy that's just like the departed yeah <laughs> wait He's just describing the yeah. <laughs> And then his boss fell off the fucking roof. Yeah, and then he had 12 <laughs> beers that night. <laughs> and then the other boss won't give him, reinstate him. He deletes him from the system. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, I had a. At the time, I had two jobs. One boss was the nicest lady in the fucking world. My other boss was just a nightmare. And it had nothing to do with me being a drug addict, alcoholic. I remember calling out one day because I had like a coke. It was during a, a Flyers playoff run, and I had a cocaine bender the night before. And that day was just full on recovery mode. And I was supposed to be in at work at three. So like one o'clock, I texted him like, yo, I'm not going to make it in today. She's like, why? What's up? I was like, "Uh, my car's broke down. She's like, no problem. I can pick you up. It's like, you fucking bitch. (laughs) You nice fucking piece of shit. Yeah. So I had to go in in the midst of a fucking cocaine hanger hangover. Uh, um, Just pounding headache all day. Sweating. With with you chopping pubes. (laughs) <laughs> chopping lines and chopping pubes no i was i was uh working at a program for kids with behavior problems <laughs> oh okay this wasn't yeah. when you were a penis barber yeah <laughs> <laughs> the penis barber of fleet street yeah no I, I was working with troubled youth who were working with troubled adults <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mr mike you're really sweaty yeah. and shaky today yeah. <laughs> who rescued who <laughs> That's the. I mean, without divulging, like that's where you know I would have went to school had I my parents not switched me to Catholic. School. No, it it was, uh, oh, was a school close by. Okay, okay. Like that was my my daytime gig, but then my nighttime gig was working at okay this alternative school. Gotcha. And it was like I I don't know. It was I liked the job itself. But my boss was a nightmare. Yeah. Like what kind of fucking dirtbag offers to pick you up? Somebody who was like, you know. Yeah, I'm going to get this motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Somebody that can tell what you're up to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I believe they call them good managers. <laughs> that is the worst. Well, when you're trying to get off work in your, your boss office to drive. An alternative. 15 mm-hmm. miles yeah. away, out of the way. Yeah. Did, could you tell that you were fucked up as soon as you got in the car? No, I mean, I was I was technically fine. I just wanted to you not, not do want anything. To go, yeah. yeah. Have you? Well, yes. You said Papa John's. You know, called no show, right? Papa, um, Papa, Little Caesars. Little Caesars. Okay. Papa John's. I did the same too. Yeah. You know, called yeah. no show. Yeah. Is that your move to get out of a job? Is just that? Used to be. Yeah. 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 That was that was it. Like I had. Did you fake a phone call, Irish goodbye there too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Have you ever no called no showed anywhere? No, I don't think so. Yeah. How about you? No. One time. What was and, it for? Uh, was that the end of the job? Yes. Yeah. yeah I didn't, you and don't I, really get a next. And chance. I didn't go back for a check or anything, but I had. It was the week I asked off for uh, senior week. And, and they were, said no. Yeah, they said and, no. And, and I was it's like, not an option. It's like, sorry. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be here that week. I had already. Oh no! Wait, this was after the fact. What was the job? Oh uh, no! Um, I had already skipped my cousin's wedding. To like down in Florida uh, for work at oh, Wawa. Oh fuck them! I was like, I have to stay and work. I have a job. It's I'm responsible. And then uh, when senior week came around, I was like, Can I go off for senior week? And they're like, No, we need you. Like, and I was like, All right, well, we'll see if you need me come Saturday morning. <laughs> yeah. Seven to three. Uh, how about seven to me? I don't know what that means, but but you it, did get seven. Yeah, I got seven though. <laughs> I did hit seven. <laughs> it does feel good, though, sometimes. It's just like leave him hanging. Oh, man. Brother. 
I, I, I got fucking nailed one time because like I had this one job. I hated it so much because it was a scam. Yeah. And I just felt horrible that like people weren't getting anything for their money. It was like cleaning air ducts for this fucking dirt bag in Chad's Ford. And uh, we used to have to, we used to arrive at his house every day and pick up the van from his property. And he had this very strange property where he was always like digging with like heavy equipment on the yeah. property. Uh, okay. Yeah. Red flag. Yeah. And uh, the equipment didn't work. <clears throat> and he just like took advantage of mostly older people by getting these jobs. And you would pay anywhere between two and 300 bucks to have us come and hook the equipment up. And it was, it just didn't work the way. For what people were getting paid, were paying, you did not get that in return in yeah. value. Then one day I was just like, all right, fuck this shit. I'm not doing this anymore. So I took the work truck back to his house and it was like, you couldn't see, you couldn't see if he was home until you pulled up on his property. And I, I assumed like he wouldn't be there because he was rarely home at this time. And as soon as I pulled up, he's on his porch and he's on like, his uh, porch. he's like, uh, what are you doing back? And I was like, I yelled from between my, the work van and my car to his porch, I got diarrhea. I gotta go home. <laughs> and I was like, the keys are in the van, and like he could just tell that like this is it. He's like, all right, well, feel better. And Damn. then that was the last I saw. He said him. it like that. Like, yeah, feel better. Yeah. Damn. Uh. Okay. So otherwise, you would have just not called the next day. Right. Yeah. 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 But he called you. Yeah. Have you ever told a boss to fuck off before? I don't think so. You look like you have. Twice. Yeah. How what? Feel? Twice. Uh, one was a job I loved. They hired you back? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, first job was at a music store that I loved working at. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just got in a fight with somebody. And I was just like, you know what? Fuck you. And I left. Yeah. Uh, like literally, like I had just got into work. I think I was... Uh, I can't remember why we're fighting. Probably me being late or something. Was it your boss? Uh, yeah. 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 And I was just like, it was a new boss. I was like, fuck you. You're not. You're not my old boss. And then <laughs> you're, you're not the. Well, technically, you are the boss of me. But <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to be the boss of me. And then the other time was actually it was a construction job. I was a project coordinator, but all I did essentially to collect a paycheck was color blueprints. <laughs> I didn't even do the math to like order material it was an office construction job my cousin got it for me and uh that's who i cursed out was my cousin uh and it was it was awesome yeah Damn, that's Pete. been patched over though no no we actually don't even talk anymore but no not way be- that i mean there was a lot of things along the way that broke the you yeah, know yeah. Fr- friendship uh that was the biggest one but like yeah he's dead to me now so fucking Furman. Yeah. so he fucking knows how to hold a grudge <laughs> Is that a hold of chode too? Fuck that pussy. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is a not a chode. <laughs> it's a micro chode. We've established though. No. I do regret not telling some bosses to fuck off. Oh man, my last boss was the one I wanted mm-hmm. to I hold their head. Uh, but I you know Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only while we're recording. This will go live on the free channel one day, right? <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, I wish I knew what was gonna be on the free channel beforehand <laughs> you keep me on my toes mike are you a pig baby no. whatever you equal say baby it's fine if there's I something you I don't either. like well i don't think i'd say we'll anything bad on pay to promote it <laughs> danny dubs when you pixelate my penis can you actually is there an effect where you can the camera removes 10 hundred pounds <laughs> can you add that i'll go to the yeah <laughs> All right, boys. You ready to wrap it up for the evening? Yeah. Have we have we completed it? Yep. All right. <laughs> it's not a test, dude. <laughs> did I pass? Yeah. You did, buddy. Oh, sweet. You got your associates and fucking dickheadry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kaldan Jala, Furman Matera, Danny Dubs, thank you guys for another splendid evening. Thank you for a great episode, and also thank you for a great live AMA. Thank which you. you recorded right before this. Man, this was so much fun. Thank you for teaching me such such knowledge. I'm going to get drunk and give you a haircut one day. <laughs> yes, Can we do dude. that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you do that like if for maybe like a Patreon thing, if both of you got fucking hammered and gave each other haircuts, would you be okay with that? 
No, I personally. Well, John, Jake would. He's well, a good I enough sport. I don't want my hair cut. Oh, Jake's got short hair. That's more doable. I'll get fucked up and give him a haircut. Yes. But that motherfucker ain't going near my dome. <laughs> I'll let. I'll tell you what. I I will. How about you get super fucked up and then you cut my hair? Blindfolded. <laughs> Why do I have to be blindfolded too? Because it's funnier. <laughs> okay. I'll let you do that to me. Really? I will. All right. All right. I'm going to do a good job. I bet you won't. <laughs> we'll see. And then, how about this? All right, you you fuck my hair up. Then you gotta put me on a mattress and pour something down my throat. <laughs> like what? Kool Aid. I thought he was gonna say cum. I'll take that too. Yowzer! We should have cut this episode five here. minutes ago. <laughs> Are we gonna have Rick on on site like a paramedic? Oh yeah. Job? <laughs> no, you can't. You have to wear it for a week. All right. Yeah, I, I would do that. Okay. A fucked up haircut no for hats. the sake of this show. You can't hide behind the Patreon for a week. <laughs> Can I wear this? <laughs> no hats, no masks. All right. Well, I'd be willing to do that. Fuck me up, fam. All right. That's going to be fun. Let's do it. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're watching this on the Little Stinkers Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. If you haven't become a patron yet, you can go to patreon.com slash Little Stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. You could engage in all our fucking... But fucking. <laughs> and all the other stuff we do here on the Patreon. You get the episodes a week early. You get access to our live AMAs, which is the most fun that I have podcasting. Uh, we do live episodes on June 29th. It's our next Little Stinkers live episode. And Patreon, patrons, patrons, uh, patrons are going to get to watch that live. And you guys can interact with us. And, and we can have fun with each other. And uh, we can suck each other off while we're at it. And any other fucking weird shit we do, we put on Patreon, so you have all that. Four bucks a month, or you could pay 40 bucks for the year. Anything you boys want to add? I think you said it all, my chippy. Yeah, happy to have Danny Dubs back. We missed you, pal. Welcome missed you, home, buddy. Danny. Yeah, missed you, you so much. Fire gifts, dude. Yeah. Mine has booby on it. <laughs> <laughs> we should have got you a turtle flashlight. I'm so sorry we didn't. <laughs> because, it, because it has a booby on it and it's a flute, does that make it a trans instrument? <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>